This is a 1979 Glastron CVX-16. We're currently looking at the aft end where the boat well is and where the well ties in to the transom. I bought this boat in 2009 and I noticed at the time that there were some stress cracks in some of the high stress areas. Anywhere you see a fillet like in here, up around here, up around here was real bad, and then down were the flat transitions to the vertical. Lots of cracks, and over the after several years of trailering and running, uh, those cracks were getting really bad. I put the mark a boat on the market to sell it, and I after I realized what was going on, I took it off and fixed it. And then after I fixed it, I decided I wanted to keep it. But uh, I'm going to show you how I reinforced these high stress areas using epoxy and upwards of 18 layers of bi-directional aviation grade fiberglass. And I'm going to take you in close and you'll notice there is no you will not see a single stressed area. You can see the tape line here coming straight across. Now the glass comes about halfway out from the fillet area down here. But uh, it has proven to be very, very effective and this motor here is a 150 Avenrute E-Tech 2013 and it weighs about 100 pounds more than the original 115. I have a video out there. In fact, it was my first video with that 115. If you want to take a look at it, please do so. But uh, with all the extra horsepower and torque, on the back end, I decided I definitely wanted to beef this thing up and make it better. Um, and it has proven to be very effective, like I said. With all, and I, we live on a dirt road, and uh, that just just beats the crap out of this thing back here. So I know I induced a lot of added stress based on where we live. Running through the materials real quick. We have flox, which is cut up or chopped up uh, cotton fibers. This is what we mix with the epoxy to create a filler. Over here, we have the West System epoxy and hardener. The other epoxy that I'm familiar with is called safety epoxy, and that would also work very well. I happen to like the West System. It's very popular in the marine business. Uh, one of the things I like about it is it doesn't stink. Paper cups for mixing. Sticks, stir sticks. Uh, we have fiberglass here, and I'll get back to that in a second. Have plenty of paper towel, masking tape. Uh, back to the epoxy real quick. Uh, highly recommend using the pumps that are available. available. They dispense the right amount for mixing, which is very important. Uh, one pump of epoxy equals one pump of hardener, and you mix those two. So if you pump twice with the epoxy, you're going to want to pump twice with the hardener. Uh, you can get various uh, hardening resins, uh, depending on how much time you want. I happen to like the 206. It gives me uh, 35 to 45 minutes of working time. That's a picture of the fiberglass plane I built some years back. I was out over El Paso that day and we were doing some aerial photography. It was a lot of fun. That's another shot doing some formation flying with an aerobatic plane. Had an awful lot of fun that day. Okay, we're also going to need scissors. 
and uh, that pretty much covers it. There is one other material that I'm not going to get out, but I will talk about. It's called Micro Blooms. They're micro glass beads that you can mix with the epoxy to create a uh, filler. I only use that for the final finish, and it's I, I don't like using it uh, only and only will use it when necessary because the micro blooms will get in the air and I'm always concerned about breathing that stuff in. So always wear a mask when working with any of these materials. Step one is going to be to clear the motor off, get the fuel line taped back, get all the electricals and the control lines out of here. You got to clear this area, make it accessible so that you can do the job right. You're going to have to remove some molding here, this back piece of molding right here, out. Step two, you've got to map out the area that you're going to be glassing the, and then follow, it, follow up the mapping out with uh, sanding off the gel coat down to the glass. This is very important. That gel coat provides no structural integrity at all. You want to get down to the glass so that you can bond to the glass. Step three is to grind all the cracks that you have on your transom. Anything that needs to be filled, you want to grind it, open it up. Here's an example of a die grinder I use. Very handy tool for fiberglass work. Dremel tool with a drum sander is very helpful in the, all the fillet areas where you have compound bends. Here's a rasp file for digging. This file also came in handy. Bottom line is you want to open up all the areas that are uh, exposing themselves and open them up so that we can then later fill with an epoxy flox mixture. Step four is to clean the area. Step five is to get all your glass pre-cut. So the, if I come out three inches here, add the distance up here and then out here, we're probably talking a 10 inch wide uh, cut and then the full length. And then I believe what I did was ran a separate fillet or a separate cut of cloth coming up here. It, it's okay to overlap, that's not a problem. And then you want to get a length here. So for this area down in here, if you went two to three inches here, two to three inches here, you're probably talking five to six inch width all the way here from this length down in here. Bottom line is get all your glass cut and ready to go and have it in the order that you want to lay it down. So the, what I would recommend is cut the big pieces first because basically the schedule I did or prefer is a the big pieces first, six, six layers, and then come in about two inches with another six layers and then finish another six layers in all your high stress areas, <coughs> including the uh, underneath where this, these bolts go. So these, these areas here and down in the fillets have 18 layers of uh, bidirectional glass. So do your big ones first, then the smaller ones, and then the smaller ones, and then take that whole, lay them down off to the side Lay them down and then flip them over and then you'll have your first layer that you're going to lay in and then you can follow them through all the way to the 18th layer. We're going to lay all of these in 
at once. When I say at once, you're gonna, you're gonna start with the first layer and you're just gonna keep right on rolling. When I'm cutting the glass schedule, I want to always cut the glass such that the strips as they lay in over the areas are always, the fibers are on a 45 degree angle. This is very important. And I'm going to explain mathematically later why that is and how it works. This drain hole had a plastic insert and my fear was is that water was getting in underneath that plastic insert. And as it turned out, I was correct. So I pulled that plastic insert out and threw it away. What I did was I went in and drilled that hole out bigger than it was, and then I dug out as best I could any wet wood in there and got that uh, dug out and dried out as best I could. And what I did was I taped off the back of the drain hole and packed that drain hole full of an epoxy flux mix. Just completely stuffed it as best I could. And then all the cracks that we've already prepped, you take that flux and epoxy mix and fill those things and fill them liberally. You want those things stuffed with this filler. Now, I like a particular consistency and I, I've done three videos. They're called Saddle Repair, I'm sorry, Saddle Point Repair, episode one, two, and three, where I actually went through and live did my glass and epoxy layup, including the flocks filler. <clears throat> Would recommend that you guys take a look at those videos if you want to see how I did that. Step seven is wetting out the glass layers that you've already pre-cut, lay them down, wet them out, make sure you get all the air worked out from underneath, any air that might collect very important and just keep building up your layers layer after layer of uh, your glass layups I like the idea of going six over the whole entire area and then another six cut back a little bit shortened up at down here at the base of the well and then a final six in all the high stress curved areas that's probably anywhere from three to four inches in width. So you want a nice overlap, go through the curve, and then another overlap. Make sure you take six down through the high stress, uh, the structural area where the engine mounts, and then uh, that final six across the, the curvature all the way across. And of course, we're gonna duplicate all of this on the other side. You're wondering where I came up with 18. The airplane I built called for a schedule of 16 layers for the engine mounts in the bulkhead uh, firewall of the airplane. And uh, I took that number and just added two. Step eight is we're gonna wait 40, uh, 24 to 48 hours to, for this layup to dry. And then we're gonna come in and sand it, sand all the rough spots, and actually sand the entire area, but you don't wanna to get too aggressive and get it down to the glass. We're just sanding it smooth and prepping, prepping it for the final coat of uh, filler. Step nine will be to take an epoxy micro balloon mix, and this is, this is kind of optional. I liked it and I did it because it really helped transition everything prior to putting on a gel coat. Step nine is to sand the micro balloon epoxy mix in preparation for the gel coat. And uh, that's step 10. Step 11 is to drill out the drain hole. We don't want to forget that. So I undersized 
the hole myself because I wanted a nice heavy layer of flax epoxy mix. The final step is applying the gel coat. This is an example of what I used for gel coat. It's clear and you want to mix it with your colors. I'm back in the shop here and I wanted to touch real quick on why doing this glass on a 45 like what I'm showing here is so important. Let's assume that if we ran the glass with the fibers this way that it would give us a structural capability of a hundred pounds. This is just for discussion. So we do all our layups and the glass fibers are running this way and this way and it proves that it, it's going to give us it 100 pounds of bending force and this is the back of the transom and then this right here at the bottom is the well base base of the transom so the transom transitions into the well right here <coughs> so now we take the same glass layup only we we so with the fibers straight up and down the fibers right now are running this way with this piece of glass. Now we rotate it 45 degrees and the fibers are running like this. So if you look at the equation I have, what we want, so with on the 45, here's our resultant. And that we've already determined and said it was 100 pounds, except now we've got it on an angle. So if we take... If we want to find out the strength capability in the y direction, we would take the sine of 45 degrees, which is 0 0.707, and multiply it times that 100 pound capacity. And what we come up with is roughly 71 pounds. And you're going to say, well, why would we do that? Because we just decreased our capacity by 30 pounds. Well, no, we haven't. We've increased it because we have fibers running in both directions. So you basically, to find the Y component total, we would double it. So we would take that 2 times YR, which is 2 times 71 equals 142 pounds. So this same piece of cloth, by rotating at 45 degrees, we've increased our capacity by roughly 42% with the same piece of cloth, same weight, same everything. Don't you think that's cool? I think that is so cool. My aunt says I'm OCD. Actually, she says CDO so, because it has to follow the letters of the alphabet. I think she's right, but I just think that's the cat's meow. So um, I think we're going to call it quits there. And you guys take care. Thanks.